This is AP Precalculus topic 2.8 about inverse functions. Uh, so we're going to look at these inverses in a number of different ways. First I'm going to look at it just, just simply numerically and then we'll look at how that translates to the graph and finally to the equations. Uh, but we kind of have the same running theme in all of it. Uh, numerically, if uh, if f of a is equal to b, then f inverse, that's the notation for an inverse, of b is a. Okay, so basically we're just going to switch x and y. Okay, so on this chart, if the point negative 2, negative 7 is on the original equation, then negative 7, negative 2 is on the inverse. If negative 1, negative 4 is on the function, then negative 4, negative 1 is on there, and so on. Okay, so these values are on the function, these values are on the inverse. Okay, next we're going to look at the graph of inverse functions. So the first fact for functions and their inverses uh, is that the function and its inverse are symmetric to the line y equals x. Okay, so just like with numerically, we can switch the x and y coordinates of the function to arrive at the inverse. The consequence of that uh, is that the domain and ranges are switched. If the x's and y's are switched, then that directly relates the domain and range are switched. Uh, so let's go ahead and graph some inverses. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and graph the line y equals 1. I'm just going to make, not y equals 1, y equals x. Okay, because my whole graph is going to get reflected over there. Okay, there's different ways you can do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some key points and just switch their coordinates. So the point negative 2, 2 is going to go to 2, negative 2. We switch the x and y's. This point at 0, 1 is going to go to 1, 0. We have a point at 2, 3, which is going to go to 3, 2. And then this endpoint here at 3, 1 is going to go to 1, 3. Okay. Uh, and before I start, I'm going to do my domain and range for f. I'm just going to abbreviate d for domain. We go from negative 2 to 3. And then my range, we're going from uh, 1 up to a high value of 3. Okay, so let's graph the inverse. So this point goes to 2, negative 2, and notice it's right over that line y equals x. 0, 1 goes to 1, 0. 2, 3 goes to 3, 2. And then my 3, 1 goes to 1, 3. Okay, so there's my new equation. Uh, one observation is it's not a function. Okay, so this, this would be an inverse relation rather than an inverse function, and we'll talk about how do we guarantee or can we arrive at an inverse function um, here in a minute. But let's talk about the domain and range for the inverse. Okay, and I'm using this notation for inverse even though it's not a function Let's just write inverse. Okay, the domain is going to be from negative 2, or sorry, from 1 to 3. And then my range goes from negative 2 to 3. Okay, which, as I said, is just the switch. So this domain and range becomes switched for this one. So let's do another one here. Let's 
start with my line y equals x. Okay, let's do my domain. So for f of x, my domain is negative 2 to 4. My range goes from negative 4 to 1. So without even seeing it, the inverse is going to have a domain from negative 4 to 1 and a range from negative 2 to 4 because it's going to be switched. Okay, so here I'm just going to talk through my points. So the point at negative 2, 1 is going to become 1, negative 2. Point at 0, negative 3 is going to be at negative Three zero. Okay, it's going to kind of parabolic there a little bit. Uh, the point at three negative two is going to be at negative two three, and then the point at four negative four is going to be negative four four. Okay, this is another one that is not a function. Okay, so what creates an inverse function, or how can we tell if the function is an inverse? So the original graph must pass, pass a, and this is in quotes because it's not a technical thing, a horizontal line test. So in these graphs that we had here, that black graph didn't pass a horizontal line test, which means its inverse didn't pass a vertical line test, which is our unofficial test for, func for a function at this point while we're in x and y coordinate plane. Um, f and f inverse are what we call one-to-one. -one. Meaning for every x value there is one and exactly one y value, and for every y value there is one and exactly one x value. There's no repeating in either of those. Um, but we can, in certain functions, uh, create an invertible function, um, or invertible equation, if a restriction on the domain uh, can be made um, to make the equation so we can do uh, make the inverse. And we'll see this in a second with something like a parabola. Okay, next we're actually going to find the equations for our inverses uh, analytically using algebra techniques. Okay, so the process for this is to switch x and y. Just like we did in the table, we switched the x and the y. Just like on the graph, we switched the x and y coordinates. For the function, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to switch x and y. Uh, then we're going to solve for y in whatever type of equation we're dealing with. Um, and then the last step is to replace that y with the symbol for an inverse. Okay, so we're going to start by switching x and y. So f of x is our y, so that's going to become x. This becomes 2y minus 4. Then we just have a little bit of algebra to get us there. So my y is going to be x plus 4 over 2. So my inverse, and you can leave it like this, or I'm going to go ahead and write it as just x over 2 plus 2. All right, so we're going to switch x and y. Okay, and we're going to solve for y. The issue is here, I have several y's, um, but that's okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is multiply this over. So we're going to have 2xy minus x equals y. Okay, then I'm going to put everything that has a y on one side and everything that doesn't have a y on the other side. Now, I have y's in both of these, so I'm going to factor that out. Okay, and that's how I can get it, so I just have one y. So now, I'm going to divide by that, and that's my inverse, so my inverse is x over 2x minus 1 which actually happened to be the equation itself. Okay. 
x equals 2 root y minus 1. So we'll divide by 2. Okay, then square both sides. So I'll have x squared over 4 equals y minus 1. So y is going to be x squared over 4 plus 1, which means my inverse is x squared over 4 plus 1. Okay, next we have x squared minus 1. Now there's a restriction here. When x is greater than or equal to 0, because we know if we graphed this parabola, okay, it wouldn't pass a horizontal line test. So if I flipped it over, it wouldn't pass a vertical line test. Okay, so this restriction on the domain allows it to be invertible to a function. Okay, so we're going to algebraically solve for that y. Okay, and then I'm going to take the square root. When you do that, you get plus or minus. Okay, and that's why I need that restriction. This is not a function. If I plug in a value, I get multiple output values. Okay, it's a sideways parabola. So when x is greater than 0, that means we want the positive side of this because we have our parabola, the inverse, so we don't have this part of it. So the inverse is just the top half of that square root. Okay. Finally, we have the actual definition of an inverse. Okay. The definition of an inverse is f and f inverses are inverses if and only if the composition f of f inverse of x equals f inverse of f of x equals x. So when we do the composition, you should get out x, which is the identity function. So just like 0 is an additive identity, 1 is a multiplicative identity, y equals x is the identity function, that if you do the composition of x and any other function, you get out that function. The inverses um, essentially cancel each other out. All the squares, square roots, all of that will cancel each other out when we do the composition. And you should get out x for both of these. So let's look at how that works out. So I've got these two things. I'm going to verify that they are in fact inverses. So I'm first going to look at f of g of x. Okay, so that's going to see b f of, I'm going to take this whole thing and plug it into the x for f. So instead of 3x squared, I'm going to have 3 root x minus 7 over 3 squared plus 7. Well, right away I can see that that square root and squared are going to cancel. Okay, the 3's cancel there. And absolutely negative 7 plus 7 cancel, and we are left with x, which is great news. We are halfway to verifying. Okay, so now we're going to take that f of x and plug it into g of x. So instead of x minus 7 up here, we're going to have 3x squared plus 7 minus 7 over 3. And the same process is going to happen. We're going to see stuff just collapse down here. The plus 7 minus 7, the 3's, and then the square root of x squared. Verified. Okay, so we'll do this again with our new equations. Okay, so we take that equation, stick it in for the f here. When I distribute, this becomes x 2 thirds times 3 is 2 and we get out x. So half verified. 
Okay, and we'll repeat it the other direction. Okay, we'll distribute there to get x plus 3 minus 3. So we get x. Uh, so this is topic 2.8, inverse functions. Thank you for watching.